In today's suppressor test, we're looking at this little beauty from Troy. It comes with its own muzzle device, which Luke doesn't like. I love everything about that can, except for the nails on a chalkboard. Just, it's barely audible. Maybe most people can't hear it, although my hearing's not great anymore. But just that right there is just that one sound that sticks in the back of my brain and I don't care for it. But again, outside of that, pretty dang impressive piece of machinery. What I liked the most about the Troy is that it is a reflexive design. So it goes back over the barrel more than more than the other ones do. So there's some space over the barrel. Uh, that was something that was popular quite a few years ago and it's fallen out of favor, but consistently uh, when this is mounted, everyone talked about how good looking it was. It really, uh, I, I, we heard it an awful lot during testing. You're probably gonna hear it as you watch through this video. Okay, you wanna see the numbers on this can? Stick around. We have the Troy Cryptos, and this is a 5.56 design, and it's a bit of a reflex, which means that the threads on the inside of this are pretty deep down in there. If you, have, if you stick your finger deep in there, you can see, so you have a little bit of can volume behind. So that tells me a little more appealing if you're putting it, it's a bit heavy, but if you're putting it on like a, uh, I don't know, a 22 inch hunting rifle, right, you reduce the overall length. What does that do for sound suppression though? Well, uh, typically, the, for internal volume, you want to have stuff in front of the muzzle. It's it's a it's less efficient when it's behind, but it still adds something. There is a, a quality to quantity all its own. So I guess we can find out. Yep. But it isn't as long on the gun as it looks. Which outside. is worth something to me. Yeah, absolutely. Indeed. Indeed. And again, tubeless design. Well, it's look good. Heavy. Yep. Beefy. Let's see what it weighs in it. Any, any guesses? Nineteen. Seventeen. All right, I'm gonna go with one pound. I'm gonna be off. Whew, it is 21.4 ounces. 21.4. So, our heaviest. It just goes to show that when you bring them in the hand, that balance effect really does make a difference. Yeah, so the weight of a silencer can affect a lot of different things. It can affect uh, your point of impact shift, but silencers are made of different materials. They have different baffle designs. And importantly, they have different balance when you add them, like something heavier on the end of your gun, you might have to balance it out, but we've got a couple of cans here at B&T. Mm -hmm. That is our lightest of this group, it was 11.3 ounces. And then right next to it is this Boss, right? That's 12.1, but kind of flop them around in your hand, tell the, tell the difference in there. Yeah. Yeah, you can definitely see the difference in it. I think you'd very, it's more noticeable on the gun because like on this one, uh, the B&T can, all the way it's pretty much to the rear, so it's close to the muzzle and it's less noticeable when you have the gun out in front of you. Mm. Whereas on this and the Boss, I think there's w more weight out front so that when you shoulder the rifle, you notice it more. And just between these two, we're talking about under an ounce difference, but you pick up the boss and you move it around, it's well the end. and the balance really well, well. changes it. It's kind of the difference between like subjective and objective data. Like the, our objective data is just how much it weighs on the scale. And there is a way to do objective balance, but that's kind of beyond like, you know, a little Walmart kitchen scale that we all have access to. So subjectively, we pick it up and it can move it around and it feels different. Yeah, I, you said, 12.1 mm -hmm. and 11.3, 12.1. 12 12 yep. If I had to guess, and, and we did, I mean, uh, this one feels, this, I put this one at 17, 18. Mm -hmm. just, mm -hmm. just because the balance is yeah, right. I'd never, Yeah, I'd never guess that they were within an ounce of one another. I mean, to be fair also, we have, we have this like 11.3 ounces spread out over a much larger yeah. surface, mm -hmm. right? Point. I mean, the can is a little bit wider, it's a little bit longer, so it's just gonna feel lighter. I guess, you know, if we had, you know, I mean, so it's density at that point in time too. So is there, so there's a lot of stuff going on. And you know, I'm sure there's some nerds with computer models and stuff like that, but you know, we are nerds, but we don't have computer models yet. So we just gotta, we, oh God, we have to shoot them. We're <laughs> idiot nerds. <laughs> I'd rather be running the trigger than a keyboard and a computer model. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Bare muzzle, and we're gonna do three shots for an average.
2603. 2611. 2668. Twenty-seven fifty-six. Twenty-seven twenty-four. Twenty-seven zero four. Twenty-six fifty-six. Twenty-six forty-eight. Five shot average. Twenty-six nine eight. All right, we got the Troy. Fun part about the Troy is that it is a uh, partial reflexive design, meaning that it goes over the barrel itself to give yep. it a little bit, more, a little more internal volume. We'll see if that internal volume translates to lower back pressure. Mm -hmm. Let's find out. Troy, first mag, one shot per second. Mag number two, two shots per second. The answer to that question is a resounding no. <laughs> One shot a second if you can hang with it. Three to five round burst, you want to trade? No, yeah, I'm good. Okay. Three to five round burst, mag number four. Mag number five, one shot per second. Mag number six, two shots a second, plus cook-offs. Mag seven, one shot per second. Last one, full send. Woo, I'm 
glad that's over. So, one of the things that we're seeing here as we're scorching this table up, we get cook-offs from mags four to seven, and it's a sign of um, you're getting a lot of gas back pressure, seeing you take breaks during yeah, it. Yeah, had to. And, and it's, uh, if you're gonna have a gassy can, you gotta have some thermal regulation in there. And thermal regulation is important. This way. Oh, geez. <laughs> yeah. I'm kind of punch drunk right now, I have to admit. I've absorbed so much freaking gas and lead. And uh, yeah, um, don't do this at home, kids. We do it so you don't have to. His next editor's letter is going to be written in crayons. And, <laughs> and I was the Marine. <laughs>